What's up, guys? Our good friends from Game Time are back with the channel, and we're so excited about it. And hey, what a time for them to come back on, and what a time for us to have a Game Time offer for you, because right now, the baseball season is in full effect. And who doesn't love enjoying America's game? Well, with the Game Time app, you can enjoy America's game and save money while doing it. So go to the Game Time app right now. Sign up using my promo code DCTV. We'll give you $20 off of your first purchase. Now, it is baseball season and we all love baseball, but Game Time is not limited to just baseball. You can do anything, concerts, comedy shows, basketball, mixed martial arts, get tickets to anything by using the Game Time app. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the Game Time app. Download it right now, create an account, Use my promo code DCTV for $20 off of your first purchase. Again, guys, go and download the Game Time app. Use my promo code DCTV when you create an account, and we'll give you $20 off of your first purchase. Welcome back, Game Time. We love you guys. We've missed you. All right, guys, UFC 304 just wrapped. I'm at a bit of an odd angle because I'm I'm I'm, I'm freestyling on this thing that I got them using. Um, what a night. It's Manchester, guys. It, it is legit six o'clock in the morning right now, so I just had to make sure I give you my my instant reaction to what just went down. I mean, what a phenomenal night! The fight started fantastic early, got great again late. Look, Bilal Muhammad became the welterweight champion of the world today, and while that may surprise some people that have watched these two, kind of believed or Bilal Muhammad and his team believed that this was. A foregone conclusion and honestly if we would have looked at this fight before watching leon fight kamaru and defend effectively against colby you might have kind of anticipated that this was a possibility but tonight Bilal muhammad fought the absolute perfect fight you know he said all week that he would make this look easy i didn't believe him and i will say that openly i thought he was underestimating leon edwards i thought when he was walking out to the octagon he looked a bit confident and I wasn't sure that it was warranted, but what he did in the octagon tonight was so special. He really did look like Khabib, if I'm being completely honest. The pace, the pressure, the wrestling, and you know what? The striking. You know, Bilal gets a bit of a bad rap, and at times they say he's born. But I will tell you right now, that was furthest thing from a boring fight from the new champion. His pace was amazing. His pressure was amazing. His striking, he fought and struck with Leon Edwards. He outlanded Leon Edwards. He was able to do things that we really didn't expect him to do to Leon Rocky Edwards. You know, it was it was a fantastic performance. This guy fought 12 fights unbeaten before he got his opportunity. And he recognized that if he didn't get it done tonight, it would be a hard time for him ever to get another title fight. But not only did he cash in, he cashed in in dominant fashion. I thought he won four of those five rounds. And when I was talking to him afterwards, he leaned into the haters, which you knew Bilal would do. But he spoke about how important this win was for not those haters, but for the people that mattered to him, for his family, his wife, his dad, who was in the octagon. It was truly just amazing. You know... I spoke to the former champ, Leon Edwards, and I, I said, was there anything surprising? He said, you know, my body just felt tired. He said all week he felt tired. Guys, these guys walked to the octagon at 5 o'clock in the morning. The UFC did a great job of trying to prepare them by giving them protocols to follow, by working them on a program to try to help them be ready to fight at such an odd time. It sounds like it didn't work for the former champion. But if I'm being completely honest... He did seem a bit flat, but I don't know if he was at his best, if it would have made much of a difference because Bilal Muhammad fought so wonderful tonight. I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised by the improvements Bilal's made, but he's done it time and time again. I mean, we watched him fight Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and just wrestle. Then we watched him fight against Sean Brady and he knocked on. You're like, wow, this is a new Bilal Muhammad. Then we watched him against Gilbert Burns. And I think that was the most telling fight for me that told me this guy was ready to fight for a UFC championship. Because in that Gilbert Burns fight, on short notice, in Ramadan, 
he not only won that fight, he dominated that fight. And he just took that and he built on it tonight against the former champion, Leon Rocky Edwards. Guys, this crowd was crazy all night. But during that fight, Bilal Muhammad and Leon Edwards, they had nothing to say. I, I don't think I've ever heard 18,000 people more quiet in my entire life. Uh, people started to walk out because Bilal was taking them down and dominating. They were in anticipation of what was about to happen. I wouldn't walk out on Leon Edwards because we saw him do it before. Tonight, he didn't. He went out fighting them. He landed that beautiful elbow at the end that cut Bilal Muhammad very bad and left him bloody and battered. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing these two do it again. You know, they fought twice. We had the, the, the no contest, the first one. We had a Bilal Muhammad victory in the second one. And I just don't know who right now is clearly the next guy to fight for the welterweight championship of the world. So I wouldn't mind seeing these two again. But hats off to Bilal Muhammad, man. It was beautiful. It was wonderful to watch. And even though people may think he's boring, I did not find anything boring about what he did tonight in that octagon. It was beautiful. High-level striking, high-level grappling, and the cardio and the pace and the pressure was next level. Co-main event, Tom Aspinall. What's up, Miles? My boy Miles in the back, breaking down everything at the octagon. Uh, Tom Aspinall fought Curtis Blades in the co-main event. Guys, Michael Bisbing was so high on Tom Aspinall, I wasn't sure if it could be real. I was like, this can't be real. It was real. Tom Aspinall looked even better than he did against uh, Sergey Pavlovich in New York City. Curtis Blade spoke all week about the improvements he's made, how he was ready to fight Tom Aspinall, striking and wrestling. Aspinall went at him like there was no threat. The first combination he threw was a bit reckless, and he got clipped with a left hand. So what did he do? He went right back to the same combination. Jab, right hand. But the jab really hurt Curtis. He hurt him with a jab, guys. This guy seems to be the future and the present of the heavyweight division. We keep saying future, but he is the guy that's active, that's defending that championship. You know, John Jones and Steve Miocic are going to fight each other, and deservedly so. These guys, if anyone, who want to choose a fight and who to fight, deserve it. Jones and Miocic. They fought all the best in the world. They beat all the best in the world. You know, when they get to New York and they fight, Tom Aspinall needs to be in the building if he's smart. You know, then I, I, I watched him finish. I watched the way the crowd reacted to him. And I watched his call out to John Jones. And in Tom Aspinall fashion, he was nice about it. He needs to rile up Jones a little bit to get the people more invested. Because I will tell you this, and I've seen this before. I have seen the crowd get so uh, behind a certain person that the organization will pivot. We saw it with The Rock and Cody Rhodes. Maybe they'll pivot and make Aspinall versus Jones right now. You don't know, right? We don't know. But Tom Aspinall has to get a little bit louder. But in terms of the fighting skill, I don't know that there's a better heavyweight in the world right now. You know, a lot of people are going to jump to say Tom Aspinall can beat John Jones. I'm not rushing to say that. I was in there with Jones. He, he is smarter and he fights harder than most give him credit for. I believe that Tom Aspinall will present problems for Jones that he's never seen before in terms of the size, the speed, the height, all combined. But I'm not going to be one of those people that rushes to say, well, John Jones ain't fighting Tom Aspinall because he's afraid of him. He ain't afraid of nobody. And John Jones will be able to compete against him. Patty Pimblett submitted Bobby Green. That was the first time Bobby Green's ever been submitted inside the UFC. Patty Pimblett's size, his length, and his striking confidence is what I believe made Bobby Green take that bad shot. And those transitions from Pimblett, from the guillotine to the triangle, it was phenomenal. I know the crowd has soured on Patty Pimblett. But I believe, I thought this would be the toughest fight that he's ever had in his entire career. But I believe now it's time for the fans to get past that and look at Patty Pimlet for what he truly is. He's going to be ranked now. He called out uh, the, 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 the Brazilian kid from uh, Moicano, from Miami. That would be a phenomenal fight.
the build to the fight would be great. The fight would be fun because Moicano is a tremendous submission fighter also. But it's time to look past all the things that you've had with Patty Pimblett. He had a great message inside the octagon. He does a lot of things right, especially in his fighting and the way that he rocks the mic. You know, a lot of the fights tonight were just fantastic, guys. You know, we saw Gregory Rodriguez do his thing again. Uh, we saw Giga Chagaze Arnold Allen do their thing. Bruno Brazil fought well against Molly McCann, and so did Jake Hadley and Modeskis Bukowskis. You know, one last thing before I go. Manel Kopp and uh, Manel Kopp and Mohamed Mokayev, I was a bit disappointed. Those guys, guys at 6 o'clock in the morning, don't worry about me. I'm okay. Those guys hated each other so much that before the fight started, they had to be separated. You can't hate a person so much that they have to separate you at every turn. You want to fight before the fight starts. You want to fight in the hotel. You want to do all these things. And then when the fight starts, you guys don't fight. That was so disappointing. I get it. Manel Cobb broke his toe. But these guys needed to lay it on the line if that is what they're going to do. Guys, the beauty in our, our career is that at the end of the day, for all the bad blood, you got to fight that man. But when you get an opportunity, you go fight that man. It is what it is. Guys, here's a video of, of, of Sweet Caroline. The energy in here was nuts. It was bananas. Patty Pimblett's walkout was nuts. Leon Edwards' walkout was nuts. Tom Aspinall's walkout and interest was nuts. The Manchester crowd really did show out. It was a phenomenal night. It was a phenomenal week for Manchester, and I'm thankful for it. Guys, until next time, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell their friends that DC's got a YouTube channel. And I'm doing this from Octagon side after every UFC pay-per-view. Until next time, peace. Tom Aspinall did it again. Talk to me about the performance and what your expectation was tonight. He did what I thought he'd do. I knew he was going to do that. That's what he does to him. He has proven time and time again to be the best guy in the division, you know? And now he's saying, it. I'm the best heavyweight in the world. I know your intention is to sometime to get one of those fights with Miocha or Jones. What is the likelihood in that? <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I'd like, you, I'd like him to do. He wants. He wants to do that. The, the, yeah, I tell you one thing. If it was me, you would. I was would done. You? I'm fighting the old guy, and then I'm retiring. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think that's what I'll happen. <laughs> I do. That's what I'll Let's see. Let's see this week if, this, if they come up with anything different. Tom's got another idea that, you know, fight anybody. Congratulations again, coach. Thank you. You guys man. are doing an amazing job. You got the a rich man. <laughs> Y'all about to get much richer now because I'm you're the world champion. Oh, oh, I mean, man. what did you make of that performance, Lou? The performance, we could have did better. You, you think know? so? I think so. I, I thought he so. fought the perfect fight. I think, I, listen, I think we could have outstruck him. We didn't have to wrestle so much, but we did. We won the fight. We had a game plan. We stuck to it. We didn't have to go to plan B, but I was ready to drop that B and start letting them, lighting them up, you know? Well, the pace and the cardio was a problem, but in the striking, Bilal not only held his own, I think he won the vast majority of the striking exchanges. Is that what made it so easy for Leon Edwards to get taken down? I don't know, because, you know, I would have to pick his brain on that part. Uh, everything Bilal was doing was working. We missed a couple takedowns. Leon fought a good fight. He took us down a couple times. He reversed us. Bilal took, you know, his his takedown defense record took some knocks. Uh, but Leon's uh, undefeated streak also took a knock. Yeah, it did. And, you know, Bilal Muhammad's now the welterweight champion of the world. It's been a long time coming. How gratifying it is for you and the entire team for Bilal to it, now be holding that title. It means the world to have such a good guy, such a good Muslim, such a good brother, such a good friend, such a good person get what he's worked so hard to get. Congratulations, Thank dog, you, on your champion. For you guys sure. deserve it.